uh, as well as Planned Parenthood. Well, Professor Judy Ansel is here now in our studio to discuss her ordeal and what it means for academic freedom, education, privacy, and labor education. Judy Ansel is the director of the Institute for Labor Studies at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Welcome to Democracy Now! So explain everything that took place. This all happened in the last few weeks. It started on April 25th, Amy. And uh, I was informed that this video was up on uh, Andrew Breitbart's webpage, Big Government. And I watched it, and I was just appalled, because uh, I, I knew it was me speaking, but it wasn't saying what I was sa had said in class. I also knew that whoever took the videos, it was an inside job, because only students with a password had access to these videos. And so I began to think, well, which one of my students would have done this and would have edited these tapes? Um, we later did, did find that out, but immediately— Who was it? Um, it was a student named Philip Christofanelli, who is a full-time student at Washington University. In St. Louis, not St. your Louis. universities. Right, right. He was in the St. Louis part of the class. And uh, um, as we came to find out later, he was a founder of an organization called Young Americans for Liberty and is affiliated with the Tea Party. And Philip, using his password, copied these videos and claimed on Breitbart's webpage that he uh, just showed them to friends because he was so disturbed by what we were saying in class. Well, I think his friends include James O'Keefe, um, who is connected to Breitbart and insurgent. Think? Well, O'Keefe has been seen on campus at events that were sponsored by Phillips' organization. Mm. So um, he he frequently he and it's it's clear he's been on uh, Dana Loesch's program, which is a talk show. Dana is a commentator on CNN and, and a she rising has a radio star. Talk show. She does a radio talk show in St. Louis, and uh, she had Philip on. She also had the lieutenant governor of Missouri, uh, Peter Kinder on, who misquoted the misquoted videos on her radio show and called for I us to be. Fired. I want to turn to that. Uh, the um, the radio host based in St. Louis, uh, Tea Party activist Dana Loesch, who played a key role in the campaign against the two professors. After playing excerpts of the doctored video on her radio program, Loesch interviewed Missouri Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder. What would be the reaction from the mainstream media, lamestream media, if we had uh, a Tea Party leader out there oh, right. advocating violence? Right. And preaching violence to, to impressionable young minds. Uh, they, they sit around matter-of-factly. You can hear this on the two videos that are up on biggovernment.com. You can see it. Matter-of-factly discussing uh, uh, violent overthrow of the capitalist order, of the existing order, the workers taking to the streets and committing violent acts of industrial sabotage. And, and the speaker, Don Gilgem, is the business agent for the International Operating Engineers Union that works at Ameren UE. This is a matter of grave seriousness. Well, and this is, and I, and there are a lot of people that like to say, oh, well, this, you know, it was done in the club. They, they were just talking about, you know, different, they were just learning, and it's academic freedom, and it, you know, it needs to be a safe. That's not what they were doing. You had people who were giving doing. their personal experiences engaging in this stuff. Uh, that was Dana Loesch. I don't know if she's actually a Tea Party activist. Is she, Judy I, Ansel? I don't know for sure uh -huh. if she is. But, but she was interviewing Missouri Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder. Can you respond to what they said? Yeah, well, first off, of course, we never were teaching violence in our classroom, nor sabotage. Uh, we were talking about the violence in labor history, which is extreme in the U.S., and, and uh, uh, we were talking about the fact that in many situations, uh, there is violence, and it's mostly directed at workers. Sometimes it comes from, it came from workers. Uh, we were very clear that we do not advocate violence. Uh, these folks were putting words in our mouth, and they have an, a, pol a political agenda for sure. Uh, the timing of these attacks is very important because uh, Peter Kinder was on her show because Peter Kinder was promoting an anti labor agenda. Uh, and an anti-public worker agenda. This coincided with the last two weeks of the Missouri State Legislature, where they were considering right-to-work bills, a so-called paycheck protection bill, as well as uh, cuts on the political voice of public employees in the state of Missouri. I don't believe it was an accident that they timed these attacks to coincide with that. 
Um, later in the interview, and my colleagues tell me that Dana Loesch is the St. Louis Tea Party co-founder, um, the radio talk show host in St. Louis, um, Loesch invokes the possibility that the video could have been edited to distort the professor's statements, a possibility both she and Lieutenant Governor Kinder dismiss. The only way that any of this, sir, would be that they could take this out of context is if at the very end of all of this, at the very end of all their statements and their discussion and telling their students that, oh, yeah, we left a screwdriver by, you know, you know whatever, just to kind of scare people. And we followed them around. We showed up at this baseball game where they were, is if at the very end of it, they said not. And then that was cut off, though, in the editing. Yeah, as though it might be some kind of Saturday Night Live skit. Well, we should be so lucky. I wish we. W I wish it were. Again, the Missouri Lieutenant Governor uh, Kinder Judy Ansel. We did talk about examples of where workers were denied the right to strike and what happens. Um, we talk about labor rights in the class. We talk, we talk about the importance of negotiating, of coming to the table and having a meeting of the minds. All of that was left out of the edited videos. The, they very selectively picked those things which could be interpreted as uh, promoting violence. I want to turn, Judy Ansel, to your colleague, your co-professor in the class, Don Gilgem. This is how the BigGovernment.com video presented his comments. I think if you look at labor's history over the years, you'll find that, you know, we've had a very violent history with violent protests in certain instances, uh, strategically played out and for certain purposes that industrial sabotage doesn't have its place. Uh, I think it, it certainly does. Uh, but uh, as far as, uh, you know, and I can't really honestly say that I've, I've never wished or have, have never been in a position where I hadn't wished ill harm on somebody or uh, uh, inflicted any pain and suffering on some people that all human, you know, didn't didn't ask for it. But you know, it, it certainly has its place. That clip has two key distortions, removing parts where Gilgem speaks critically of violence. It's spliced in the middle to remove a key phrase, and it also omits what Gilgem says at the very end. This is that closing passage that the video omits. It certainly makes you feel a hell of a lot better sometimes. Um, but, uh, but beyond that, I'm not sure as a tactic today, uh, the type of violence or reaction to the violence we had back then would be called for here, and I think it would do more harm than good. Don Gilgem, uh, that was Don Gilgem, Judy Ansel, um, explain what he's saying for those who are having a little trouble understanding. And we should explain that this, this, um, class you teach is done through the school's video interconnect. Right. So some students in each class are watching the, you know, you're in, you were in Kansas City and he's in right. St. We Louis. Had a total, we, had, we had a total of about 22 students and um, they are all listening to the lectures and reacting. It was a, a class that had a tremendous amount of discussion, a lot of questions from the students talking about all kinds of uh, strategies, tactics, history, law, law, labor rights, those kinds of things. So what Don was talking about was that um, uh, violence, again, was something that is a very important part of our history, something we need to understand and we cannot omit. But um, again, he was, he was talking about it historically, and that's distorted. He's paid a huge price for this. What happened to Don Gilgen? Well, two days after the, the story uh, went up on Breitbart's webpage, Don's international union president of the operating engineers uh, called him and demanded his resignation as business manager. Uh, he'd been business manager for 27 years of a very important local in, in eastern Missouri, western Illinois. Um, and he resigned. He had planned on retiring anyway on May 1st, but he resigned a few days earlier. And uh, that really hurt. Uh, luckily, his members have rallied to his side and opposed that action, but it's done. We only have a few minutes. Talk about the students and what this means, what this pushback was all about. The fact is, um, you now have your job, and mm -hmm. Don Gilgem has been sent a letter from the chancellor? Of St. Louis, University of Missouri, St. Louis. Because uh, he telling, was forced... He was forced to resign, um, yeah. And uh, that was reversed, 
and they have indicated Don, as, as you said, and he was told that he will be rehired. He's an adjunct, and this raises the whole question of the rights of contingent faculty who teach now a majority of the courses in our universities. How can they have academic freedom when they're subject to this, these kinds of attacks? They need to be supported by their universities. What do the students do? The students, uh, our students organized. They set up an email list. They started bombarding the universities with support letters for us, denying that we were teaching violence. They gave, they gave us a number of statements, and, and also decrying the fact that their images were put up on Breitbart's page, a violation of their privacy, possible violation of federal law. Um, and that they were exposed. One of my students said, my boss watches Fox. Uh, he can recognize me. I don't want to be fired for this. Um, and, and one of my students said, look, we need the freedom and the privacy to uh, talk about these issues, even inflammatory issues in the classroom. That's how we learn. And if that space is violated, that really takes away our right to an education. Do you feel like this would have been different a year ago, uh, the, resp the outcome that you would Absolutely. have been out, that Don would have been out? That's right. What I changed? Think, I think we would have been toast. Uh, what changed is Shirley Sherrod and the attacks on NPR, the attacks on ACORN, and the fact that the media is now getting wise to Breitbart's lies. And so they held off, for the most part. There were some bad stories, one in the St. Louis Post that was not very favorable, and one in a Columbia, Missouri Are you exploring paper. legal recourse? Yeah, I am. I am. But the fact is that most of the media waited for my response and then my university's response, uh, which took three days to come. And then we got the headlines, not Breitbart. That was a huge change, and I really appreciate that. Judy Ansel, I want to thank you for being with us, director of the Institute for Labor Studies, University of Missouri, Canada.